Oh, another morning, another day, another episode of Friday Daily Show. Today is May twenty first, two thousand twenty one. This is. Did you just check on the calendar? Calendar. 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 Well, this is the third Friday of the month, and we have one more Friday next week. That'll be the twenty eighth. Yeah. What's wrong with checking the calendar? It's Nothing. really good, you know, to take. I just had a feeling that you weren't sure. <laughs> well, yeah. See, the thing is, if you're not sure about anything, right, you always have to double check your of information. Course. Exactly. Right? It's Misinformation. If you can avoid it as much as possible, yeah. Yeah. Right? So if anyone makes fun of you for double checking your work or your or checking the calendar, forget about them. Forget about you. <laughs> All right, you guys, welcome back. Friday. Oh, Let's see. I haven't even stretched yet. Can I stretch first? Go ahead. Or you can no? Stretch. You, you can stretch. No, you can start while I stretch. I guess. There we go. Well, today first observance is stretching day. No. In danger. Endangered species, species day. day. So, what does it mean to be endangered species? How does an animal species become endangered? If、uh, they go low in population. Low in population, so they're not making a lot of families as much as they're supposed to.、Mm-hmm. But why they're not making a lot of families? I would say being endangered is about a level lower than、uh, extinction. Yes. Well,、right? yeah, yeah. So little, endemic little, little, would be. Uh, endemic would be like、uh, you being a common population in a certain area, right? Right.、Okay. Yeah, yeah. And then、sure. threatened, I guess, would be the next level、yes. where、uh, your population is getting affected by an outside factor, right? And then endangered,、uh-huh. and then extinction. Ooh, I don't want to be extinct. Of course. So when we talk about endangered species, right? We usually talk about how. You know their homes are getting smaller and smaller and smaller. The habitat is getting the、uh, what do you call it reduced due to human interference, usually because of、uh, you know logging,、mm-hmm. pollution, or sometimes they're being hunted, hunted or、yeah. poached. So like animals like the elephants and the rhinoceros, right? Their horns get you know they get cut off、mm-hmm. and sold for weird reasons, which you know superstition usually. Wait. So you mentioned、uh, you mentioned two different kinds of animals, but you have a different picture. Right. What can you say about this picture? So these guys, you guys, you know what it is here? These、uh, orange guy. Baboons. These orange guy. Are they called baboons? These orange guy that lives in Sumatra. Orangu. Oh. Orang. Orangutan. Orangutan. So orangutan. orangutan, also known as man of the woods, right?、They、Why did、that. I say baboons? I don't know. Well, you know what, bamboo, bam, bamboo, <laughs> baboons, baboon. They look kind of look like、uh, Rafiki from Lion King. Yeah, yeah. But、well, he's a yeah. man. That's what I, that's what I remember、driver. for some reason.、Yeah. Oh man. So these guys are in danger because you know, well,、mm-hmm. forests around their area is getting smaller and smaller, right? So they don't have much space to roam and really. You know, live a life free of stress. Oh man! If their life is full of stress, right? They can't really, you know, populate. You can't make、right. families and stuff like that. So, Jeff, what's another animal that's similar to the orangutan that's also extinct? Not extinct, but in critically endangered, near extinction. Near extinction, really? Yeah, they're they're、uh, no, they're. Really, I would say I would say gorillas, but very good. Yes, r- are they really? So they're、wow. they're another、um, great apes, big monkeys. Uh huh. No, well, they're not monkeys. They're apes, right? That are critically endangered, so we、okay. have to watch out. How about this? What is one of the most intelligent animal that's in the ocean? Dolphins. Right. There are some of them. The porpoise is going to get.、Uh, they're critically endangered.、Mm-hmm. Um, we talk about rhino, rhinoceros, and elephant. They're getting hunted. See, these population, right? Is usually because of human human activity. Human or, activity、uh, that causes. Their population、mm-hmm. to dwindle, becomes smaller, and we have to be really conscious about the Earth because one, it's not for us. The Earth is for well, every not, living thing. Yeah, it's every not just living for、thing. us. Yes, <clears throat> we gotta learn to share it to other、uh, living things. Right, right, right. So, I'm trying to think of other animals. Oh, like the cheetah. Uh huh. The cheetah was、uh, when I was studying biology. Right,、uh, the cheetah was a prime example of. A bottleneck effect. A bottleneck effect happens when, like, their food that they eat, right, becomes so low that they become hungry as well too, and their population becomes smaller and smaller and smaller.、Mm, okay. Not, small group of cheetahs, right, 
they started to breed with each other, right? But their genetic pool, right? Their genes, they're not, they're no, they're not, what do you call it? Many different kind of cheetahs, so their genes are really not um, wide range. Okay. So they have a lot of genetic effects, and all the cheetahs that are now, nowadays, are descended from this group of cheetahs that survived that starvation period mm -hmm. that reduced their thing. It's called bottleneck effect, if you guys want to look it up. So, what can we do? We can limit our consumption of food products that causes deforestation. Mm -hmm. So one of the main things that uh, contributes to deforestation is um, I think it's palm oil. Okay. Palm oil. Like trees are getting cut down, use that oil for, you know, food products, beauty products, a lot of stuff too. So it's a very versatile effect, uh, vers versatile substance, right? But it has huge ramifications, <clears throat> like huge consequences. So in order for, for to get the, that chemical, friends. you have to cut trees. You get trees, you harvest from trees, you, uh, you know, do stuff with it, manufacture it. But we have to be, like I said, well, granted, conscious of what we are doing to the earth. Right. I mean, it's affecting our neighbors. I was going to say, granted, that uh, human activity plays a major role in a lot of species extinction or yeah. endangerment, right? Right, yeah, right. Uh, but at the same time, uh, not all humans uh, think the same way. No, no, right? that's I mean, The good we, thing about us me is. Me too. I'm thinking consciously too, yeah. 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 The, 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 you the are thing part, about you humans is uh, there are. People who strive, uh, you know, to do their best to actually prevent other species to be extinct, you know, right. uh, to the point that they they would even make it illegal to, to uh, let's say, to poach. Yeah. Right. So let's say this: <clears throat> there's a fish that we like to eat, right? If we hunt that fish too much, right? The animal that thrives and lives off of that fish, right? They will be hungry mm -hmm. and they will be in danger too. So it, it doesn't affect other animals as well. Right. It's a food chain, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. You did your species there. So be conscious about your consumption to reduce deforestation or any kind of environmental harm. And just be generally aware that, um, again, uh, this planet is not just owned by us. There's no. a lot of living things around, uh, whether it be small or something bigger or greater than us. And we gotta learn to share, you know? Right. We had the gift of knowledge, we gotta use it for good. Yes. Moving on, <clears throat> we have. International Tea Day. Yeah, have some tea with the uh, orangutan. Or, or some orange slice. Or orange slice. <laughs> so, International Tea Day. Are you a fan of tea? Uh, not so big of a fan, but what? yeah. Really? But I prefer tea over coffee. That's for sure. I'm not really a coffee person. Why? Because of the caffeine? No, not really. It's just, I don't know. I, uh, I guess I grew up on milk chocolate and I kind of stick to it for some reason instead of coffee. Yeah, I can tell you grew up on milk chocolate. <laughs> No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but tea, I can drink it. Yeah. Uh -huh. Tea, what kind of tea do you like? Uh, you like milk tea, right? Uh, yeah, that's, that's one. That's a tea. You put milk in it. See? I, I'm starting to actually. I'm starting to like uh, like just the brewed tea. Yes. Uh, it's hot, not the cold one. You don't like it cold? Well, I like the cold one, but I like the I like the what do you call that iced tea. Yeah, I see. Well, that's, lemonade, that's, that's... iced tea, I guess. Oh. Or if I okay, if, okay. If, if I would drink it cold, I want it to have flavor. But if I drink it hot, I'm okay with just so old plain I tea. I think you, you like, know what's it called? It's called Arnold Palmer, right? It's like oh, that's lemonade and tea. Tea. Yeah, yeah. half tea, half mm. uh, uh, lemonade. It's pretty. Oh, good. I miss those uh, sugar cubes right there. Yeah, sugar <laughs> cubes. For me, I like green tea. Mm -hmm. it, you know, really boosts your metabolism and stuff like that, right? It's a really good palate cleanser too. Hot or cold. I usually drink it hot if I want to clean up my uh, palate when I'm eating stuff like, you know, sushi and all that or stuff. Or something greasy. Greasy, exactly. Uh, I drink it cold <clears> for like uh, refreshment. Uh, black tea, I like. Uh, black tea is okay. Uh, what other tea? I like white tea. White tea is good. I'm trying to think of other teas. Milk tea. Milk tea, not too much. Not too much. I'm uh, lactose intolerant, sadly. Oh, okay. I know, it's sad. Um, I tried sunflower tea, chamomile tea, uh, Earl Grey. There's, what other teas are there? There's a lot, basically. I mean, you know, there are specific tea in specific countries, even. Right, 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 right. right. Now, how about you? Do you, you have any like national uh, tea in the Philippines? No, because as far as I know, at least when I grew up, uh, coffee is more prominent oh, really? in our country than so, tea. It doesn't mean that we, we don't drink tea, we still do. You know, back uh, then, coffee. right? Um, back then, uh, people would drink <clears throat> tea a lot. 
Because the reason why people drink tea, right? They weren't getting sick. Because mm -hmm. when they were drinking regular water, right? They were getting sick. Right. So the reason why was when they were drinking tea, right? They were actually boiling the water. Mm -hmm. And when you boil the water, you're killing all the bacteria. So right. that the stuff that make you sick is gone. So people didn't know that. So they were just drinking tea. Like, hey, tea is very healthy. I'm not getting sick. You guys are drinking water from the, you know, the river and stuff. Like, you're getting sick. Maybe they, at, at some point, they would think that the uh, the tea they put is the one that actually kills the bacteria and all, but it's the it, boiling part. Yeah, it's not the tea, but it's actually <laughs> the boiling of the water that actually, you know. I, I grew up boiling our water before we drink it. Yeah, yeah, that's, country, that's how so. you do it, yeah. Because mm -hmm. like, you have like a proper <clears throat> sewage management or anything like that in, uh, in your city, right? The mm -hmm. water is kind of sketchy. You don't really want to drink it. You don't know what's in there. Well. Uh, when I got here, I, I noticed some people actually drinking straight from the faucet, from the oh, because the sink, right? they have a filter. Yeah, but it's I, filter water. Yeah. Even with the filter and all, um, since you know, uh, I grew up differently when it comes to the approach of water in the sink or faucet. Yeah, better safe than sorry, really. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, so it's 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 a good thing that it's ingrained in your memory that you are boiling your water. So remember when you guys go like what do you call it, um, hiking, camping, right? Don't drink water directly from the river. Oh, as tasty as and clear as it look, right? You know these creepy crawly bacteria right. inside. Right? You can use it to wash your face, or wipe your sweat. Or yeah, something. yeah, yeah. Right? Just try not to get it inside your body. Yeah, because the bacteria will cause a lot of problems. Like there's this one bacteria called Giardia, right? You drink it. It usually happens to people who go camping. They drink from the water, right? And they get like <laughs> watery diarrhea. diarrhea uh -huh. Exactly. Yeah, cholera too. So you guys, um, tea. Do you drink it straight or do you put like some sugar and milk into it? Oh, if you're asking me, I, <laughs> yeah, I, can, at you. I can drink both you or can. either way. Yeah, like I said, uh, I prefer having or drinking tea with flavor if I drink it cold. Mm. If it's hot, I'm okay with uh, pure green tea or pure black tea. So the thing I usually get like uh, boba shops or milk tea, right? I just usually get uh, green tea, mm -hmm. reduced sugar and cold. I'm the opposite. And some bobas in there, obviously some tapioca, you know. I, I don't even get like bobas and tapiocas because I feel like it it fills the it's they're kind of like ice. You don't get enough tea or you don't oh, yeah, get enough yeah. drink because of the it, space. It's taking the volume. It, it, yeah. yeah, it takes the volume. So <laughs> he's so frugal. He's, so I got like, like this is my money. I want to make it worth it. I got like more sugar, less boba, <laughs> right there. I I don't really like a lot of sugar, but the like I said the. You know, some people said the reason why Japanese people live so long, right? Because of tea? Of green tea. They, it could be one, the definitely not just it. The antioxidant, and they eat a lot mm -hmm. of fish, which have omega fatty acids, right? And the most important thing is their serving size, yeah, the moderation size, of their yeah. serving size, you know? So, moving on to our last observance of today. It's national Th thought pizza of a moderation. What? party day. Well, instead of buying pizza for yourself, right? You're sharing with other people because it's a party. It's oh, a party. Man. I remember when I was in elementary school, right? I would look forward to Pizza Friday. Pizza Friday? Yeah, because we, we did so good as a class, right? Our average is so high. Our teacher would reward us with some pizza. Did, did I tell you guys about uh, how pizza would be something, is, I mean, a type of food that I'm not going to get tired of? Right. Like if I will remember we had one question or we did like a like a like a question in one of our Zoom sessions and if you can only pick one food right. that you can eat for the rest of your life, I chose pizza cuz I I mean I can eat it hot, I can eat it cold and I don't know. I so far I never got I'm never getting tired of pizza so far. So, you know, but know. the thing is like when you think of a party, right? Like if you're like a last minute party, I'm I'm always like running to Costco get some like couple of uh, boxes of Pizza. Yeah, they're it's such very a simple, it's, Yeah, it's, a, it's such a simple food item that everyone can enjoy, right? Mm -hmm. I haven't met a person who doesn't like pizza. I know, right? Right? All right. If you guys don't like pizza, right? Maybe not their favorite, but don't they put don't a hate comment. it. I don't want to know who you are because <laughs> you you, you're just weird. <laughs> not, I mean, it's not weird, but just... Okay, here's the thing. Uh, odd, maybe some people odd. will say, I don't like pizza because it has this and that. Well, a piece of your choosing though. That means you only hate the a specific topping right, right, on right. that pizza, but not the pizza as a whole. Because you can actually, I, I mean, right now you can, uh, if you if you cannot eat tomato sauce, they have a different sauce now. They, you can do pesto sauce. Right, pesto is good yeah. too. Oh, I love pesto. <clears throat> hey, what are your favorite toppings? Uh, chicken. Chicken. Uh, when it comes to pizza, surprisingly, I don't like to put a lot of meat. Yeah. I, li I like uh, spinach. I like uh, spinach. I like spinach. Uh, you know, you know me. I'm a garlic dude. So garlic, 
uh, minced and chopped. Mm. Uh, what else? Mushrooms. Oh, I love mushrooms. Uh, mushrooms let's see what else? Onions, both the red and the white onion. I can do with or without uh, mushrooms. I mean, uh, onions. It's like if, if if I if I eat pizza, I prefer like more herby or herby. You Her know, Her herby, herby, Her herby Hancock. <laughs> And then for the meat, it's just chicken, pretty much. That's I like all. Italian sausage. Okay. I like some jalapenos <laughs> on mine. I can do jalapeno, you know you, me. You can't be wrong with pepperoni. Pepperoni is a classic. Well, okay. Um, a lot of people gonna hate me for this, but I like pineapple. <laughs> oh, I like pineapple too, but okay. uh, on occasion now. All right. There's if, if you cheese. put pineapple, you have to put ham. Yeah, obviously. I mean, yeah. you know, it's that's, like, that's how it works. Hawaiian, that's Hawaiian yeah. pizza, right? <laughs> that's how it works. You know, they have little toppings too. You put like a uh, drizzle of olive oil. Some ranch, yeah, yeah, uh -huh. some barbecue sauce. Barbecue sauce, I, I salt and pepper, oregano. First, first time I spices. tried pizza with barbecue sauce, I thought it would never. I, I thought it wouldn't work, but it, it did. It, it, it does. It does. Surprise. Well, the thing is, like, the most people who put chicken, right, the grilled chicken, is usually barbecue chicken. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's, yeah, why. that's why. I like ranch dipping in ranch. Uh, I, I I've tried it, but I mean, for me, it's not the best thing, you know. But uh, it's not bad either. Another question. Regular, thin crust, or deep dish? I go for thin crust. I like thin crust. It's like kind of like a cracker, huh? Mm-hmm. Um, I like deep dish too. It's kind of like a, it's like a soup. <laughs> the, the thing I don't like about thick crust is I can only eat about one or two slices. Oh, yeah, because yeah. I mean, the crust carbs. is thick. Yeah, yeah, that's true too. But uh, thin slice, <laughs> hey, I can eat half of it. Do you like the crust or not? Do I like the crust where those hands are touching? The handle, the pizza handle. Yeah. Of course. Yeah, I, I don't waste don't... anything. That's that's the thing. I don't waste anything. I usually use it kind of like a <clears throat> dipping stick, like a breadstick. You know, uh -huh. when you finish, you just take it and dip it in like ranch, barbecue sauce, whatever your choice of your uh, sauce of your choice. Right? You, you know what? I think that's why Pizza Hut came up with having cheese or sausage in the crust area, that's so it won't go to genius. waste. Genius. I know, right? So there you go. I guess a lot of people don't prefer eating the crust part. So yeah, how do they make them eat it? You put some cheese or uh, hot dog. I don't know. So I think pizza is like one of the best party food there is. Tell me about it. Right, it's simple. You need to, there's not much preparation, right? Wait, so we talked about what, what we like mm. about pizza or on the pizza, on top of the pizza, right? Right, right, right. What don't you like? What I don't like? Yeah. How about what don't we like? I, I don't like olives. You don't like, I love olives. No. Any kind of olives. It leaves an aftertaste for me. So that's well, why definitely I don't out, put it in a pizza. Wash it out with some green tea. Duh. That's true. Or just pick it up. You know, I can do anything really. Okay, that's cool. Yeah, I that's can do, good I that can you do, do uh, don't hate any toppings. I like it cold. No, I like it pizza hot. I like it pizza cold, but I don't like moldy. Oh, of course. I don't like it mold. That's the only topping I don't like. <laughs> so you guys have a favorite toppings, right? Or you guys remember one of your uh, favorite pizza party, right? Put it in comments below. Well, here's another question. Yes, sir. What about brownie pizza? Oh, what the heck? <laughs> you know, pizza. I mean, technically, is it's not pizza, but they call it brownie pizza because you can share it as a as how you share a pizza. You know, like it has slices already. But it's supposed to be a dessert, not a main dish. Uh, well, well, can that be part of the National Pizza Day? Pizza party day, I mean. I don't. I, don't, uh, I, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I guess. Well, you know, moving forward, <laughs> we have today in history. We have in 1904. The Federation International, eh? <laughs> the Football Association. Federation International de Football Association. Well, yeah, <laughs> you can talk a little bit better because I'm wearing a mask and I have a little bit of lisp. What? So it's a I, bit hard for I me. am wearing a mask. What are you talking about? I have a lisp, dude. <laughs> All right. So it was found in Paris. No, Paris. You know, I always say Paris. 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 What is FIFA? It's the Federation for uh, Football. Soccer. Yes, or soccer. Us, for us Americans, it's called soccer, right? FIFA. <clears throat> what can I say? Been over a hundred years now, <laughs> what right? What can I say? I don't know anything about football. That's the thing. Yeah, it's over a hundred years now, and it's an association for like uh, what do you call it? But but here's the for thing: professional uh, football players yeah. come together. They play in the World Cup. You know, each team represent their country. And they you know duke it out and see who's the best. I, I was gonna say the the sport uh, football or soccer has been around even though uh, even before FIFA 
the the concept of the sport has been around for for a lot of years already. So know, the prior. thing is that they have these organizations to <clears throat> legitimize them and make it more professional. So yeah. they have more standard in terms of game rules. Put up more rules, better rules. Right. You know, that, that would apply for everyone. Make them uh, what do you call it? Make an uh, not a pun, but an even playing field. No, yeah, sure. no, so. absolutely. So it's kind of like the what you call it. The you know the funny thing is this. The world got together for football instead of world peace before that. Because no way. <laughs> FIFA, listen, FIFA was created before the United Nations. Oh wow! <laughs> you think about it. So hey, like I said, the things to unite the world, right? Is food. And sports. Food, food and sports. Food and sports. Food and sports right there. <laughs> World Peace can go a little bit uh, later. But I was just thinking, I was like, oh my gosh, the United Nation was was formed a little bit later than FIFA. That's so <laughs> weird. That, that's pretty cool. I really wish all kinds of conflicts around the world can be settled through sports. But then again, if that's the case, then a lot of people will. <laughs> you have the Hunger Games. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> no, no, thank you. I'm no, but but for me, sports is something you have to enjoy. Yeah, right? it's more of a more like a recreational entertainment kind of thing. If you kind of like do competitive, way too competitive, it's like you taking the spirit of the game. Yeah, exactly. So it's gonna be more of a serious thing if that right, happens. So right. nah. So you know about it. Forget what I said, guys. Today is Ash International Tea Day, right? So what's another? Did you say Ash? No. Oh, okay. I said international. Okay, international tea day. Tea day. You right. know what's another tea that you forgot? Uh, no. Mr. T. Oh! I pity the fool who doesn't know this guy. Mr. T. So Mr. Hey, T. Team. He was born in Chicago, Illinois, right? And he's best known for his uh, role in uh, the A Team mm -hmm. as B. A. Baracas. You you gotta tell us what his real name is. Uh, Lawrence Turo. Okay. Yeah. Mr. T. Mr. T. And he was also. <laughs> Um, was in uh, he was also Clever Lang in Rocky 3 I think okay. so he was a he was a prominent actor and an activist actually so the reason why he called himself Mr. T right his last name well T what T is his last name it's short for Tarot right yeah. but the reason why he called himself Mr. T is because back then people were like you know a little bit uh, discriminatory against African American right okay and they would always prefer them as less than a man or less than a mister they'll call him boy so so they won't address them as mister or miss no there's they would dress them as boy and stuff mm -hmm. like that right so it's really discriminatory and it's really a way of disrespectful because you're adult male and, right adult male or whatever right they will call you boy or girl mm -hmm. and that's so much disrespect so he mm -hmm. made it a uh, example like i am mister you refer me as mister mm. i'm not a boy i'm not Anything less than you think I am, I am strictly Mr. That's the most what do you call it, baseline address you can say to a person, right? Sir, Mr., right? You show some sign of respect because people weren't, you know, didn't have any respect for African Americans, right? It's sad. But, you know, he is a he's a role model for a bunch of uh, youth, you know, mm -hmm. African Americans. And what do youth. you know? He's now Mr. T. Mr. T. He pitied the fool who called him anything less than Mr. I thought at first when I oh when I first saw him I thought he was a a wrestler, cause I mean we don't we did have the A Team TV show in our right, country right, right, right. but uh, that's not where I first saw him. I'm pretty sure he showed up in uh, WWE. I think that's point, I, I, I think, think, I think, I think that's, that's why that's why I thought oh he's a wrestler and now he has a TV show. So, but it was the, the I mean the TV show first. Though. Besides his catch rate, I pity the fool right. <laughs> his signature look is his uh, mohawk hairstyle. Yeah, his mohawk that came from a tribe in Africa that he. Uh, Incorporate into his look, right? Mm -hmm. Then you have his copious amount of gold jewelry, rings, and stuff like that, right? Don't forget about him being buffed. Yeah, buff, beautiful. We don't celebrate his birthday. Happy birthday, Mr. T. Mr. T. Remember, his first name is Lawrence. <laughs> Happy birthday, Miss Lawrence Turo. Mm -hmm. Happy birthday. Moving on to cultural spotlight, we are traveling to a Southeast Asian country, the teardrop of Asia. Near the bottom. Oh, I never thought of it. Yeah, because it looked like a teardrop next to uh, India. Dude, we just talk talked about. Oh wait, no, you weren't part no, of the Monday there. episode. Yeah, <laughs> I'm sorry. Never mind. Sri Lanka. <laughs> Sri Lanka. What can we talk about? Sri Lanka. So the culture, right? Like any country that been uh, colonized, they share some of the cultures of the people who colonized it. The Portuguese, mm -hmm. Spain, Spaniards, 
and other uh, you know <clears throat> countries that culture, uh, colonize them, right? So they do take some of their influence, food, culture, and fashion of their colonizer. Okay. Which, well, the, the thing style. is, you you need to you know gain independence because you need your independence too. So, like I said, it is. I want to say so, southeast of India is an mm -hmm. island, right? So more enough, they do share some of the culture of India, right? Especially the religion of Hinduism, right? You're right. And partly Buddhism too, mm -hmm. right? So what can I say? Uh, another cultural aspect of it is their New Year. Their New Year. Their Tamil. There are the people who are called the Tamil, right? Or okay. Sri Lankan, right? So their New Year happens around. It happened this year, it happened around April 14th. So it's kind of like uh, Lunar New Year where it's yes. not really January 1st. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, they call it like a solar New Year, but our solar New Year is the first of uh, the year. Uh -huh. But their solar New Year, they try... Uh, wow, interesting. They try, what you call it, they try align it when the sun <laughs> is moving from the house of Pisces to the house of Aries, right? So they're looking at the constellation, mm -hmm. see where the movement of the sun is from one constellation to another constellation. Right. right? So that's how they mark it. And that New Year, like all New Year's, when you greet someone on New Year, you say Happy New Year. They say it in their own language too, the Tamil language, right? Mm -hmm. And it was, New Year is more, for us New Year's, some people celebrate the family, some people go out drinking all the way to late, late night. For the Sri Lankans, right? Their New Year, they mostly celebrate as a family gathering. You know, visit your elderly, your ancestor, good food, fruits, and wear your traditional dress and mm -hmm. celebrate your culture. So, Sri Lanka. I'll probably do a little tour around Southeast Asia. Yeah. Do a little, what do you call it? A little uh, flight around Sri Lanka, India. Or like a round trip. Round trip. Circle trip. Uh, that place is beautiful. Mm -hmm. Anything island, you just want to see these pristine beaches, right? With little... I mean, just look at the picture. As long This picture is from Sri Lanka, right? Right, yeah, okay, yeah. Of okay, course. just making sure. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Last, Making sure last... you just didn't grab any random what? <laughs> well, I just type in Sri Lanka, and so hopefully it should be Sri Lanka. <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding. So, beautiful place. Yeah. Actually, my wife and I are uh, thinking of uh, doing some, you know, traveling uh, once everything goes back to quote-unquote normal. Can it be a third wheel? Can I come? Uh, I'll take that much space. I'll be in a luggage. But, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. You, can't, you won't be able to breathe. But I was thinking maybe we would go to like, uh, Asian countries first, mm. other Asian countries first, because uh, my wife's not problem, but concern is the food. Oh, really? She doesn't really, she's not really as open as as me when it comes to trying out new food. Oh, you know, so she she's gonna have to stick to to the food that she's comfortable with, and uh, the foods that she's comfortable with would be t leaning towards more of an Asian cuisine. So, so I feel like, like she's more afraid of getting sick. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. She's uh, she's very cautious, you know. No, that's a uh, reasonable. Uh, what do you call it? Reasonable. Uh, well, that, that's a very reason. reasonable alibi. Or excuse. Excuse, there. You go. <laughs> Moving on to the stuff of the day. We do have a theme. I always have a theme. You so always have a theme. We have to try to figure it out. I haven't been themeless for a while now, so let's keep it going for the year. <laughs> Animal day, the first animal day we're going to talk about is the Eastern Cottontail. Bunny, bunny. Bunny! These guys come in brown. Some kind of a little bit of reddish, burgundy kind of color. A little bit of white. Mm -hmm. They're mostly found in temperate climates. So temperate climate means uh, they have a wide range of temperature. It can go from cold, it can go to hot, it can become mild, warm, right? It's unlike the Arctic where it's always mostly cold or the tropic where it's mostly hot. Mm -hmm. Temperate climates mean it can have a wide range of temperature. It can change, right? So, they're mostly found in North America, right? And to his name, where in North America do you think they're mostly found in? I don't know, probably eastern side? No, they're found in Cottontail side. Oh, <laughs> Just okay. kidding, the eastern part of uh, America. That's Speaking where you think you're Cottontail, I don't see the Cottontail. Well, it's where the butt is. We don't see the butt. Yeah, well, I, there, there's a little bump right there. I would, I would kind I, of I try to keep it PG. I want to show the <laughs> bunny butt. <laughs> the bunny butt. Bunny butt. So, why did I pick this guy? Well, important thing is they like to eat vegetables. And ah. the urine that they use, right, it contain, contain nitrogen and the nitrogen helps 
plants grow. That's nice. Uh, talking about uh, giving back to the nature. Right. So <laughs> it is a cycle. So when we talk about like uh, nitrogen fixation, right? Mm -hmm. Nitrogen fixation. Oh my! I'm like can't talk right now. Nit nitrogen fixation, right? Is basically mm -hmm. how you take nitrogen from animal uh, waste, reincorporate it into the soil, and help plants grow. Mm -hmm. So they eat plants. They will pee onto the ground, the ground, the soil, the bacteria that will take the nitrogen, use it as a way to fertilize the plant. Okay. So when you have fertilizer <clears throat> for your plants around the household, it usually contain a little bit of nitrogen. So these guys incorporate it, uh, not incorporate, they help recycle nitrogen back into the ground. The plants grow with nitrogen and they eat the plants and they return the nitrogen. There so you the go, it's can grow the again. cycle, the cycle is you know amazing and why is nitrogen important right nitrogen is found in amino acid and what's our amino acid amino acid are building blocks of protein and do we need protein you need to have yes. skin you have things you need protein so it's very important to have nitrogen in our diet so when we eat uh when we eat uh meat they have nitrogen because the animals are eating from the plants mm -hmm. and you eat plants to get nitrogen right and you need nitrogen to have protein right like muscle cool moving on we have a, one of the food products that the rabbit, uh, pet rabbits usually get fed, right? Uh, and carrots. Pass. Close, but it's called uh, alfalfa. It's not carrots. Not carrots. <laughs> so alfalfa, they kind of look like uh, bean sprouts. Yes, bean, yes. Right? Uh -huh. This is a close-up uh, picture, by right, the way. It's close smaller up. than uh, what yeah. you think. Yeah. So they're high in proteins <laughs> and other uh, nutrients, right? And they're very good. Oh, fiber too for our rabbits. Fiber, okay. We eat alfalfa too. And, do we? Uh, yeah, we do. We I don't do. think I did. I have. Uh, Consciously that you know it of, that you ate alfalfa. You probably ate it some. It's probably part of the dish because it's more of a. It's like bean sprout, you know, kind of like that. Okay, okay. And America grows a lot of them, and we use it as feed. Alfalfa. We use it as feed for uh, livestock, cattle. Mm -hmm. They eat it. There is high in fiber. It helps uh, give them uh, what do you call it? Digestive uh, properties, right? Mm -hmm. So the reason why I pick alfalfa, right? It's in its roots. They have a bacteria that helps fix nitrogen. Okay. And when I say fix nitrogen, right? The reason why alfalfa is so important, right? Is because in areas where they don't have enough nitrogen, right? These guys can grab nitrogen from the air. Oh, that's cool. They can grab it from the air and convert it into a nitrogen form that they can use to grow. Okay. And animals will eat this nitrogen and incorporate it into their body and make proteins. So, mm. like an animal, like you and me, we're, we're animals too. A cow can't really grab the nitrogen from the air. Or cannot convert it to something he could, or it could, you know, right. be benefit from. So these guys, these alfalfa, right, they have these bacteria that live in a mutual way. And they take the nitrogen from the air, break it up, put it into a different combination, mm -hmm. and incorporate it into their growth. There, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, so it's important because like, it's like, like a soil. Mm. If the soil is uh, what you call it, deficient in nutrients such as nitrogen, right? Plants are not going to grow. They need no. nitrogen to yeah, grow, yeah. right? And these guys, they don't need that kind of uh, rich soil. They can live in like really bad soil, right? Because they have the ability to grab the nitrogen from the sky, the That's air, good. the atmosphere, and convert it into a nitrogen form Nice. that you, me, animals can, can use. Can benefit from. And we secrete our waste and urine into the ground and they can Cycle of life, guys. That's nice. Really cool, huh? Even if you don't have the sound for uh, for this video, I think you would understand because Joe has been like moving whoosh, his whoosh, hands whoosh. like that. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> I've been taking all the nitrogen in the air, really. <laughs> You're like on. nitrogen bending? I'm <laughs> <laughs> a nitrogen bender. It's an inside joke from uh, Avatar: the Last Airbender. Technically, air bending is very important. Yeah. Nitrogen is in the air. Nitrogen is in the air. There you go. So, moving on our day, right? Nitrogen. We can talk about <laughs> the mill. The mill was okay. created around in 1645 into 1648. So we don't really know the exact time it was created. And also, there's certain point, certain people, right? They didn't know who exactly made this painting. They, well, it does say Rembrandt. They associated with Rembrandt, right? But some uh, art critics they say, uh, okay, it looked the art style kind of look like Rembrandt, right? But oh, but it's not, we're not sure. too sure it's okay. Rembrandt. So this is uh, in the National uh, Museum in Washington D.C. You can still see it, right? And its original, um, well, its first 
name of this painting was called Landscape with the Windmill, right? And you see the most prominent feature, almost dead center in the painting is the windmill. If you ask me, it looks more of a photo, actually, for me, instead of a painting. Yeah, like That's a... Because like a... you know how photos back in the day, they a have... age. It yeah. has its pantina on it. Right, right, right. So, what does a windmill do? They spin against mm. what? Wind. Mm -hmm. And what is wind? The movement of air. Okay. I th okay. <laughs> well, I like this painting. I, I know, but I was... You see how everything is all darkened? But... I thought we were going to be talking about nitrogen. You see how this background <laughs> is all dark, right? But in the middle, the windmill is lightened up by the sun and the sky is clear. Mm -hmm. Beautiful painting. Very beautiful painting. And you like I said, it, it looks like a photo to me. So it's National just Gallery in Washington, D.C. Yes, it does look, look like an old, old, old photo. Old timey kind of photo, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, moving on. We have <laughs> nitrogen as the science fact of the day. So it's atomic symbol, it's just a bracket with a letter N. It has seven um seven protons right so how come it kind of looks two of them so that's what i'm going to tell you so in general right when we talk about an element atomic element right it's usually one but nitrogen and um what do you call it nitrogen and nature it come in two it's diatomic die die means two and atomic means well atomic right mm -hmm. so they always come in pair like oxygen we don't talk we don't say we breathe in oxygen we breathe in o two exactly so this will be n Two? Yeah, right, right. Oh, well, but how come O2 has two at the bottom and N doesn't have a two in the bottom? It doesn't have a bottom. We just write, uh, no, no. Well, on the periodic table, right? Oxygen is just oxygen. But when we write oh. down as oxygen as a sub, we breathe it, right? We write O2 in chemistry. Oh, okay. So on, on the periodic table, right? We just write the letter N. But when mm -hmm. we're writing it in, uh, in its natural form on paper or like when we do uh, some uh, science experiment, right? We write N2 because it naturally appears as diatomic. So it's two nitrogen at once okay so nitrogen right just to make it easier hold on when yes. you say atomic uh those are going to be those those uh spheres yes so when you say diatomic as you guys can see it's Di two, means two spheres, spheres two spheres those. Okay. and you see how there's two lines right it's double bond usually and atoms then, are connected together with one bond or triple bond okay in this case is two bonds so it's okay. a little bit stronger so our atmosphere <laughs> is roughly around 78 percent nitrogen yeah we think we think with the air that we're breathing it's mostly oxygen right now it's predominantly nitrogen i mean the oxygen only stays here uh, the lower lower temperature the atmosphere. Like higher up right you're breathing a little bit more because you're struggling to get the oxygen in your uh, your lungs yeah well we, we just also say that it's also responsible for burning anything that gets into our atmosphere absolutely absolutely okay. yeah 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 so nitrogen right very important that's why plants utilize the nitrogen and fix it right mm -hmm. they use the bacteria like alfalfa we produce nitrogen through our waste not right. about soup nitrogen is very important because it's part of uh the core component of our dna mm -hmm. part of the core component in our amino acid which makes proteins protein builds most of our stuff in our body so nitrogen is very important I mean, we, it, it may not be, it may not work the same as oxygen where we breathe it in, you know, but we, still... we do breathe in nitrogen, but the thing is we have ways of like getting rid of it. Oh, okay. Right. There you go. So, uh, one way to get rid of nitrogen, right? We make it into ammonia mm. and ammonia is converted to urea. And you know what urea is? No. Urine. Oh. So that's how we, uh... <laughs> I mean, that was my first guess, but I wasn't sure. So I just that's said okay. no. That's <laughs> okay. No, the thing is, don't be afraid of saying the wrong answer, right? If you don't say the wrong answer and someone corrects you, right? You'll be saying the wrong answer for your rest for of your life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's good to ask a question and don't be afraid of asking questions, right? Right. I'm not bite. I won't bite you because I'm wearing a mask. <laughs> I'm kidding. So nitrogen. So what is our theme of this week? Why? Well, probably has something to do with air because the painting doesn't have nitrogen on it. Well, it does have nitrogen. I mean, in the air, I guess. Yeah. So very good. So the, don't the tell theme me of the, the word week, is air. <laughs> is actually. Atmosphere. Oh, okay. Get it? Because yeah. mm -hmm. the atmosphere contains the air, and the air contains seventy percent nitrogen, right? Mm -hmm. So atmosphere, A T M O S P H E R E. Atmosphere. It's a noun that means an envelope, so it covers the Earth mm -hmm. or a planet of gas surrounding the Earth or another planet. So. When we talked about this uh, last week with you guys, when I tell you guys about Mercury, right? Mercury has a very thin atmosphere. Mm -hmm. So, very important to have atmosphere in our uh, in our lives so it can contain what we have on the Earth. Right. It protects us too. So, 
Remember when we were talking about Mercury is, guys? Since they have such a thin atmosphere, right? Meteors will get won't get burned up as much as it will be on Earth. So mm -hmm. Mercury has yeah, so just look many at the moon. craters. Yeah, just look at the moon. The moon has a lot of uh craters. Craters. Facial craters. Pop -mark. Pop -mark. <laughs> yeah. Acne head, acne. Acne. <laughs> so atmosphere is very important. And atmosphere itself doesn't mean like it also means uh the general mood of a room. Okay. When you go uh -huh. say this atmosphere is kind of sad it's a sad atmosphere this atmosphere is kind of dark when you go to like a lounge cafe mm -hmm. atmosphere is just basically your surrounding as well right but right. in a scientific term it means like an envelope of gas mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's so good. It's very important to have an atmosphere so water is very important but also atmosphere without exactly. atmosphere we're not going to be here no the thing is i guess you can have water on your planet right but you have an atmosphere to protect you from the sun right exactly. all the water will dry yes. up uh -huh. and water will be mostly found in the ice caps that's and why you find water on mars usually on the ice cap right and by the way if you uh, like try to look at other uh, astronomy videos mm -hmm. it's they're going to show you visually how the atmosphere works but in reality right. you don't really see it no you don't really see it it's invisible but it's always all encompassing we always yeah feel. just see, like how a lot of pictures in the solar system has like a, a line yes you see it actually the, yeah the, you don't really see the line but you can feel <laughs> like i'm waving my hand you can feel the atmosphere you can feel the air all mm -hmm. the nitrogen there we go I right feel like. so that is the end of the show so the theme is atmosphere and air nitrogen yes speaking of atmosphere such a great atmosphere here because we have someone back yeah because we have someone back 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 <laughs> It's Sandy. Sandy's back, guys. So you probably see her. You Yay! probably see her uh, early in the week, but yeah, when we record this video, yeah, she's just gonna... making the atmosphere better. Better, right? So thank you guys for joining me, joining me and Jr. for this Friday's episode uh, of May twenty first. Right? Yes. We have one more Friday of the month. <laughs> you join me next week. We have another video on Monday, like usual. Mm -hmm. And I hope you guys learned something today. And whatever time you watch this, right? Enjoy the rest of your day. And thank you so much for watching our show and, you know, supporting us, right? Thank you, yes. All right. Making thank our atmosphere better. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thank you guys and have a good rest of your day. Bye. Bye for now. Have a good weekend. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Have a good weekend, obviously. <laughs>